Welcome to the Omaha Public Powers Board meeting uh, for April 16th. And if we can please have roll call. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Here. Gay? Here. Green? Here. Curley? Here. McGuire? Here. Mines? Here. Older? Here. Agenda item number two, notice of the time and place of this meeting was publicized by notifying the area news media by publicizing same in the Omaha World Herald and outlets by displaying such notice on the arcade level of Energy Plaza since April 10, 2015, and by mailing such notice to each of the district's directors on that same date. A copy of the proposed agenda for this meeting has been maintained on a current basis and is readily available for public inspection in the office of the district's corporate secretary. Additionally, a copy of the open meetings law is available for inspection in the public meeting book located in this meeting room. Agenda item number three, approval of the February 2015 Comprehensive Financial and Operating Report, the March 19th, 2015 Board Meeting Minutes, and the April 16th, 2015 Agenda. Okay, can we have a roll call? Motion. We motion for that? So moved. Second. Okay. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Yes. Motion passed. Agenda item number four. Persons wishing to address the board of directors on a particular item are asked to approach the microphone as the agenda item is discussed. Comments will be heard following board discussion of the item and prior to a vote by the board. Persons wishing to address the board on all other matters will have an opportunity before the close of the meeting. Agenda item number five, resolution number 6052. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the board of directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the proposal of the Deloitte & Touche LLP of Deloitte & Touche LLP to provide financial auditing services for the district for fiscal years 2015, 2016, and 2017 with an option by the district to renew for an additional two years it is hereby accepted, effective May 1st, 2015, and Deloitte & Touche LLP is hereby engaged to provide the financial auditing services. <coughs> so moved. So moved. Second. Second. Yes. All right, thank you. Well, this is... Uh, Board agenda item and finance committee reviewed the auditing services recommends the Deloitte Touche extension. We did a survey, large public power council of what others are paying for audits. It is a very large range. We're on the low end of it, but it went up to as high as two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So uh, Deloitte has a local office. They've done a great job for us. They just got done rotating their their staff, who who does our auditing. And uh, so the recommendation is to stick with Deloitte for two years. And how many years have we had Deloitte be our auditor? Um, Mrs. 1946. Yeah. 1946. All of them. So there's a lot of history behind <laughs> that. One thing, you know, of course we discussed uh, the, the different options. One of the nice benefits that we've received over the years and take advantage of quite often is, is their expertise and a lot of other things they've been offering to us. So that's been very, very good as well, and they haven't charged us at all on some of those things, and those have been actually very, very good for saving us some money. Nice to have a local office. Yeah, and put, well, and they're local, and that that also helps on the cost of you know have to pay that travel cost, which you'd have to pay to get a larger. And you can't just give this to anybody; it has to be somebody with some expertise in this. So, so our recommendation is approved. Okay. Do we have any other comments from the board? Well, we did. Uh, uh, when did we go out for bids on this? A couple. We did the last three years ago. That was three years ago. Three years ago. Yep. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Cindy Muntraft, who is going, who is our auditor actually, um, and she knows more about this than <laughs> anyone in this room. Okay. <laughs> Director Green, uh, yes, the last time that the audit contract was up, we went out for bids, and Deloitte came in in the lowest value and and highest. Um, uh, service. So that's what uh, five years ago, uh, prior to the most recent contract that we had, we, we did go out for bids at that time to ensure that their fees remain competitive. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then one thing on those fees, uh, it's $158,000. It's 5.5% 5 .5 and a 4% the next two years. That's what the increase mm -hmm. is. Are there any other comments from the public? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Motion passed. 
Agenda item number six, resolution number 6053. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the proposal of Hyundai Power Transformers USA, USA in the amount of $1,377,509 for the purchase of the 201.6 MBA Auto Transformer and the proposal of CG Power Systems USA Inc. in the amount of $681,210 for the purchase of the 33.6 MVA Power Transformer are the lowest and best bids received on request for proposal number 4627 and are hereby accepted. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, thank you, Chairperson McGuire. Uh, this is for the purchase of two transformers. Uh, one is a spare. Uh, for the substation 1366, located at uh, 27 <coughs> Platteview Road in Bellevue. And the other purchase is for a auto transformer, and that will uh, be used uh, or installed at uh, 2000 or 204th and Pacific Street uh, in May of 2016. And for specifics, I'm going to turn it over to Tim Nissen. Thank you, Director Barrett. Yes, uh, we have two projects coming up uh, for installation next spring 2016. Uh, the one of them is mentioned in Bellevue 27th and Platte, Platteview Road. That's where the auto transformer will be installed. And the purpose of the transformer uh, in this particular case is to increase the reliability of the transmission grid by allowing a connection between one transmission level voltage to another. Uh, it's kind of like uh, an interstate system connecting to a highway system. Uh, so that's going to add reliability at that level uh, in the Bellevue area, uh, including the Air Force Base area. The second one is actually the purchase of a spare transformer. Um, and the spare transformer um, will be used to replenish a stock. We, we rotate our spares uh, into planned projects. So the project that, that our current spare is going to be using uh, is 204th and Pacific Street, the same time frame, uh, spring of 2016. So this is a, a purchase of a transformer to replace that spare that will be used for a planned project. <coughs> and, and how about uh, the cost of these two transformers? Uh, the first one, the $1.3 million, is for the auto transformer. They typically are, are much uh, more expensive because of the, the interaction that they have and, and the amount of material steel that they have. They're very large. As you can see in the picture above, the, the one on the left, which is a, a sampling of an auto transformer, is, is much larger and it's bigger. Uh, the second one is the, uh, the power distribution transformer that actually connects the transmission down to the distribution level at the 204th Street and Pacific um, and those are less expensive, around the six seven hundred thousand. And this the award, I believe, is six eighty. Um, both of those are good fair prices. And they're below the engineers' estimates. Uh, the the <coughs> distribution power transformer is around six thousand dollars above uh, the engineers' estimate. So that's right on out of six hundred thousand dollars. The other estimate is um, for the auto transformer is around. Uh, the award amount is going to be around 770000 less uh, than the engineer's estimate. And the reason for that is uh, our system planning group requested that we go out for bids on this auto transformer with the potential of adding what's called a load tap changer uh, onto that device, which allows you to be able to vary your voltages on the primary or the secondary, depending on system grid conditions. And they determined that that 700000 extra dollars for that tap changer was uh, not worth the cost for the benefit that they would get from it. Okay. So we're purchasing it without that tap change option. And we're going to go with Hyundai? Yes, Hyundai. And they, because they kind of met the criteria? Yeah, they uh, met both the legal and the technical criteria. Okay. I've got a question yes, on that. Okay. On, how long does it take? You sit, can you go over the time frame again? When it actually gets on site and our people do all, or how do you, how yeah. does it work? And is there any disruption like? Would there be any disruption down in Bellevue or, you know, obviously no, this not would be disrupt a, power, a, but like roads and things like that? Right, good question. Um, no, this will be a, around an April 2016 delivery. Yeah. Uh, and, and then right away, our, our crews would be installed. Our crews would be involved in installing uh, the transformers at actually both of the sites yeah. uh, for these substation projects. And it's a it's a typical substation project where so we have planned months. transmission outages and... Uh, there shouldn't be any impact on the distribution no, as well. No, is it like a week, two weeks, a month, or how long does it take for our crews to do these things? 
Once it for the whole substation projects themselves, probably uh, two to three months. Uh, but the transformer delivery, yeah, yeah, the, the transformer delivery, because we're not just adding a substation or a, a transformer, we're, we're actually working that into the whole substation systems that are already there in place. Uh, and, and then the transformer addition itself, where you set it on the pad and connect it up, that might take several weeks. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I want. Yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they're, they're big substation yeah. projects. Other questions? I have no further questions. Thank, Thank you, was it nice that the engineer's estimate was, uh, we're lower than that, the engineer's estimate, and we got a good price. This is a matter of comment, I might add, that with completion of the new Missouri River and connecting to uh, Highway 75, yeah. and when they actually uh, get the Platteview Road, they're going to kind of change it around. They expect a lot of economic development in that area, and this is really beneficial for that uh, process. And uh, they're pretty excited about what's going to happen when that that finally gets completed is 90% done now, the road work, but they think there's going to be a lot more busy, yeah. busy traffic through there and, and commercial development. Yep. Any other comments? This will help. Any you comments this, from the public? If not, Mrs. Tracy, can we have a roll call? Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Motion passed. Agenda item number seven, resolution number 6054. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that management is authorized and directed to sell one parcel of property located north of Spring Creek Addition between 25th Street and Kennedy Freeway in Omaha, Nebraska, as generally described on the attached map, to Orchard Valley, Inc. at the appraised value of $32,340. So moved. Mr. Barrett? Uh, Thank you, uh, Chair McGuire. This is, uh, last month we talked about a surplus piece of property uh, in Bellevue. It was on uh, Kennedy Expressway and near Cornhusker Road. And we said that it was about six acres. And after we put it out, uh, we put, up for, put a for sale sign on it, we found out that it was 4.9 acres. And uh, so, Part of our bylaws is that if if we have a material mistake that we have to come to the board and and uh, Reauthorize it. So that's what we're doing. There's a, a willing buyer who wants the who wants to buy the acres and or buy the surplus property and uh, When we had an appraisal done it came back as a smaller parcel so it came back at a, at a lower price and we're just asking uh, the, the board just needs to approve the lower price and is there a motion to approve it? A motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. okay. Are there any other comments? Any comments from the public? May we have a roll call, please, Mrs. Tracy? Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gray? Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Sorry. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Motion passed. <clears throat> Agenda item number eight, resolution number 6055. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the Health Plan 2014 annual report on the district's self funded health plan, a copy of which is attached here too, is hereby approved. So moved. Second. Mr. Kavanaugh? Madam Chairman, uh, as the resolution states, in order to comply with the Benefits Act, the district is required to prepare an annual report on the health plan and required reserves. And that uh, report has been completed. Uh, costs are up uh, for our health care, but at a lower rate than recent history. Uh, that is partly due to uh, policy changes and also labor contract adjustments that have been made through the last few years. We recommend its approval. Any other comments? Any comments from the public? Not to your roll call, please. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. Hurley? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Okay. Motion passed. Okay, at this time, I'm going to go a little bit out of uh, session. I want to um, sort of mention that this is sort of a bittersweet uh, meeting for us. Uh, we have two people who will not be here at the next meeting. Uh, as we all know, Mr. Gates is retiring, and then also uh, Sherry Hutcherson 
uh, is uh, once again breaking the glass ceiling for us women, which I'm happy to say, <laughs> and is taking on a new position at uh, Union Pacific as Vice President of Human Resources. So Sherry, we will miss you very much, but at the same time, I'm very happy for you. Like I said, any time a woman can break through the glass ceiling and get up a little bit higher, it's better for, better for all of us. I appreciate that. Uh, we will see you again on June, sec June, June 10th. Uh, Sherry is going to be honored um, as in the tribute for women for the uh, Women's Center for Advancement. She's one of the uh, 10 distinguished honorees as far as helping um, women, children, and uh, being a leader in Omaha. It's one of the most distinguished, distinguished honors that you can get in Omaha. So congratulations, Sherry. for the tribute to women. I wouldn't have had that honor had he not uh, nominated me. So thank you very much, and thanks so much to both of you. You, you are extremely important to me. And as I said this morning on an email, that you're etched in my mind and my heart and forever a part of my family. So thank you. Thank you. And then we'll now have Mr. Gates give us the uh, state of the uh, union, I could call it. <laughs> oh, no. Those are three hours long, Ann. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Measured by the number. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and just last comment on Sherry. You know, we're going to miss her, but we, uh, I decided to view this as we're, we're actually sending her on a missionary uh, visit to uh, an outreach program to try and help uh, Union Pacific, our coal hauler. <laughs> and, uh, so it's just our contribution to UP to try and make them better. You know, as I've worked these last few days of my career at OPPD, I'm really filled with pride on how much has been done here. Uh, I've had a 40-year view, almost 42-year view. There's uh, three of us up here that uh, bounce around with a class of 68, I think, uh, from high school. So we've had similar memories of the world going by, but I thought it might be appropriate for this last president's report and ask your permission, I'll depart from my normal status of exactly what's happened to kind of a summary of the last 40 years. Of course, the one thing that stands out in my memory uh, is the high caliber of employees who have truly put everything on the line for this great utility. From the start of our plants to storm restoration to the many innovations we've had. So if I look back in 72, uh, when I started here, it paints an impressive picture of growth in this utility. We had 178,000 customers then. Today we've got 360,000. Our generating fleet was, uh, had a fuel mix that has changed drastically over those years. In 1972, our generating <coughs> capability was 933 megawatts. Today we're 3,232 megawatts. That obviously illustrates tremendous growth in our production. Back then we had Jones Street Station, two peaking units at Jones Street and five units at North Omaha. It was interesting to note that at that time, all our choice of fuel was fuel, oil, and coal. That's it. That's all we generated with. And then came Nebraska City Station, Unit 1 online in 79, and Unit 2 in 2009. We had some peaking stations. Uh, in 71, we did add the two oil-burning units at Jones Street. And then the rest are all gas turbines in 72, two gas turbines at Sarpy County. And they have really provided a great uh, quick start capability to our system, which we had not had before. And in 96, we added Sarpy County 3 and a Black Start diesel at that site. And in 2000, Sarpy 4 and 5 came online. And in 2003, Cass County 1 and 2. Fort Calhoun started operations in 1973. 1989, we opened a training center there, which many of you have been in, and simulator in 90 and 91. We had a license extension in 2003 to 2033 for that unit. Combined uh, in thousand, 2006, replaced the head and pressurizer, steam generators at the unit. And in 2011, obviously the flood it was a tremendous effort and the regulatory uh, issues that we ran into with a restart in December of 13 of that unit. It's been running quite well. It's in a refueling outage right now, day five, I believe, day six of that outage. It's going well. North Omaha, we've implemented numerous pollution controls on these units. They've been serving our customers since the 50s. In 2014, with the culmination of our first stakeholder process, which I think is a huge advantage for the company going forward, we announced the retirement of three of the oldest units at North Omaha. 
retrofitting the remaining units for basic emission controls, and then eventually converting them all to natural gas. Now we've added a lot of units, but one group touches them all, and that's central maintenance. The central maintenance employees maintain all our generating units, and they work all the outages. They do a great job, John, and, and they put an emphasis on safety. One illustration is central maintenance machinists have gone 16 years without a dark case, safety issue. Renewables? Big story. 2002, we had Elk City Station, a landfill gas plant. In 2009, we showed our commitment to renewable energy, setting a goal of having 10% of our electricity to retail customers coming from renewable energy by 2020. We've already exceeded that goal in 20, 2015. <coughs> 2010, we had the Flatwater Wind Farm adding 60 megawatts of capacity, and in 2014, we have 418.6 megawatts of renewables. Wind energy comes from eight wind farms that we participate in, and we plan for an additional 400 megawatts in 2017, which will put us in the 30 to 35 percent renewable. In energy marketing and trading, we buy and sell electricity in a way no one would have managed, imagined 40 years ago. In 2009, we joined the Southwest Power Pool. It's a collection of 76 utilities, generators, and transmission companies serving 15 million people. In 2014, we entered the SPP Integrated Marketplace, which essentially is a computerized clearinghouse that matches buyers and sellers and to, to find the least cost solution for our customers. And that transition was seamless, thanks to the team that did it. T&D, the backbone of our T&D system has been in place for years, but a number of improvements have, in, have uh, gone over in the last four decades all in the name of reliability. In 1987, we added the Energy Control Center, a tornado resistant center that serves as the nerve center for TND. We added strategically located service centers to our service area to supplement our existing service centers. In 1987, the Elkhorn Service Center. In 92, the Syracuse Service Center. And in 2011, a new Omaha Center with sustainable features. In 1997, the historic October storm dropped 13 inches of heavy snow knocked out power to 130,000 customers, some up to 11 days. From that, we greatly improved our restoration, how we field customer calls, and how we communicate outage information. Our full storm team conducts annual training. OPPD has improved education on trees. 2004, 26-acre Arboretum was opened, and OPPD just received the Tree Line USA designation for the 15th year in a row. Use of technology has improved. We're implement we've implemented mobile computing, OPPD is using a new camera technology to decrease the time and cost for inspections in the downtown network. And we use infrared cameras for aerial line inspections, and we're researching the use of drones to do that. And no, they won't be landing in the capitals. <laughs> in finance, we have been good stewards of the ratepayers' money over the years. At every opportunity, we invest back in the business and make wise capital decisions and refinance bonds when it makes sense. Interesting that in 1972, our operating revenue was 63.8 million. Today, our operating revenue is 1.1 billion. Our O&M expenses were 39 million compared to 832 in 2014. And with any growth comes increased debt. We had 435 million in debt, and now we're 2.2 billion right now. And that sound you hear is Mora. Right. <laughs> Which is a welcome sound to my ears. <laughs> Our customer base has more than doubled in 40 years. And advances in technology have fueled that uh, increase uh, of energy usage. And we continue to focus on customer service in all those secretaries, er, sectors. Energy sales were 4.3 million megawatt hours in 1972 compared to 18.4 million in 2014. We added account executives to give personal service to large uh, CNI customers. We have spearheaded a number of innovative education programs for residential customers, business customers, and school children. One that's near and dear to me is Power Drive, which is high, where high school students build light electric vehicles and showcase them at a series of rallies. The program started 17 years ago, and it helps bring their math and science classes to life. Hundreds of kids have taken part in that program. Some have gone on to energy and automotive-related industries as a result of Power Drive. Our energy assistance program is another. It was established in 1988 to provide emergency aid to elderly disabled and other folks that just are having trouble, having experiencing financial difficulties and need help with their energy bills. OPPD's total funding since it began is more than 4.2 million. 
In the last 10 years, employees alone have contributed over 500,000. It's this kind of focus on customers that led us to receive 13 consecutive JD Power Awards. It's not enough to provide monthly updates to our customers at our meetings. They want information immediately, and they want to uh, say in how we run our utility. As I mentioned earlier, we implemented the stakeholder communication process, which serves us well and will be great in the future. We have public forums, online panels, increased presence in social media, and interactive channels improving the way we interact with customers. <clears throat> And of course, to the people in the team at OPPD, which is near and dear to my heart. Now, this is an interesting statistic and uh, opened my eyes, and it may some sitting at this table with me. The workforce is changing. In fact, 43% of, of our employees were born after January 1972. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have placed an emphasis on safety. We created a safety division in 2007. Yes. <laughs> we started leader meetings so OPPD leaders could discuss utility issues as a group, created the President's Award to recognize employees for exemplary efforts. In 2010, we put together the OPPD Society of Engineers to create, attract, to create a, attract and retain, engage, and develop engineers. And in 2014, the OPPD Women's Network was created to attract, develop, and support, and advance, and retain talented women. In 2014, we held the first day of remembrance to honor the 18 men who have lost their lives in the line of duty while working on the job at OPPD. The project came to fruition thanks to two long-term employees who were part of OPPD's Career Connections Mentoring Program. It's that kind of care and concern for each other that stands out most to me, for the men and women at OPPD. And I want to thank each and every one for their hand in making OPPD what it is today, especially the Board of Directors and Senior Management both past and present. Without you, none of this would have been accomplished. Um, I want to thank Kathy, my wife, who's here today, of 37 years. Actually, we've known each other since refueling outage one. Refueling <laughs> <laughs> outage 27. So we made it through the first refueling outage, and after that, it was just the way to go. Our three children have been so supportive. One of one of them is here today, Jenny, with one of our four granddaughters, Maura, Maura May. Uh, the middle name is, was from my mother, and uh, she was born on my birthday, October 25th. So one of the great benefits of Maura, other than being an outstanding granddaughter, is I will never have another birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it will be Maura's birthday, and, I, and that's OK. They've all played a great part in supporting my career at OPPD, and I couldn't have done it without their support. It's been a real honor to serve the last 11 years as the president and CEO. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Gary. And all that has happened in the past 43 years uh, couldn't have uh, happened without some of your leadership and a lot of other people in OPPD who are there, lots of other people. And now we are going to sort of uh, give a tribute to you. I think I'm going to stand up here to do it, over here. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't see what's ridiculous about that. It just it looks pretty good. Away. I still like that picture. <laughs> I still like, I like the first day, your first picture too, when you first came on, it was pretty good. Okay, milestones from scout to chief. Kerry uh, was a, an Eagle Scout. He got the Eagle Scout badge. He had the highest rank attainable in Boy Scouts of America. And he continued a lifelong dedication to the Boy Scouts. And in 2010, uh, received the Distinguished Eagle, Eagle Scout Award, honoring those who devoted a lifetime to their profession, avocation, community, and beliefs at a great sacrifice to themselves and their families on a national level. Uh, career and milestones, Scout to Chief. Uh, this is sort of a, by the way, this is going to be a long presentation because it's 43 years' work, just like again. <laughs> so sit back and relax. <laughs> In 71, he joined as a part-time seasonal employee. He officially joined in 72 as a test engineer, was named uh, Fort Calhoun Station Reactor Engineer in 75, 
became super supervisor in 78, plant ma manager in 82. Uh, Mr. Peterson, who was a CEO at that time, noticed that we had a good leader here, a potential leader, and assigned him as an executive assistant in 1989. And in 1990, he became a division manager, <coughs> became uh, vice president of nuclear operations in 92, and finally in 2004, was named our 11th president and CEO. Under these Gary's leadership, we have achieved several milestones. Gary also mentioned many of them already. Uh, where I'm just going to go through a few of the other ones that he might not have touched on. In 2004, OPPD opened the Arboretum, a 26-acre site at 108th and Blondo, which I love to visit all the time. And uh, we have many uh, students come there and uh, learn many things about uh, trees and also placement as far as safety placement as far as utility lines. 2006, OPPD replaces major components at Fort Calhoun Station. That was the industry's most ambitious refueling outage ever attempted to date. I think everybody remembers a great big hole in the containment and wondering whether or not this is going to work or not. Well, it did. Uh, 2009, we began to aim green, and we committed to 10% renewable energy by the goal of 2020, which I'm happy to say that we blew that out of the... Uh, we blew through that, and uh, we now have a goal exceeded to 33% by 2018, and we'll continue to do so. 2009, Nebraska City Station 2 comes online, a 663-megawatt coal-fired plant that costs at that time, I think, only $800,000. Now to build one of those plants would be billions. 800 million, sorry. Yeah, that's typical aneurysm. Sorry, 800 million. Nice try, Joe. I know, nice try. <laughs> million, but it's not a billion, right? It's not two or three, four billion. 2010, um, the OPPD Society of Engineers was formed to attract and retain and engage de and develop en engineers, and now we have over 400 members. 2011, we have the LEED Certified Omaha Service Center by the airport that is opened. 2011, um, again, OPPD protects the assets from the unprecedented flooding which was perhaps one of the biggest challenges OPPD has ever had to uh, overcome, and I'm happy to say that we have. Uh, a lot of people thought we wouldn't get Fort Calhoun up again, and we did. 2012, OPPD enters into the agreement with Exelon and adopts the nuclear management model. Uh, we've now completed complete integration of OPPD and Exelon this year. And now in 2013, the Omaha uh, Station was awarded, awarded the Small Plant of the Year Award by the Powder River Basin Users Group. 2013 again, we increased focus and support on cybersecurity, and Fort Calhoun successfully restarted after two years, eight months of hard work, sacrifice, and support from all areas and all employees. Again, Gary mentioned it, we've had 13 consecutive JD Power Awards for residents' customer satisfaction. And finally, this year, we've implemented the stakeholder process regarding future generation portfolios and announced the retrofit of North, North Omaha Station, which I think which is wonderful. And from the, in the future, we'll continue using that stakeholder process, which we're doing right now with the sustainability program. Uh, 2014, we entered the Southwest Powerful Integrated Market. And uh, finally, this spring, we have emerged from uh, the manual chapter 0350 and have returned to column one plant for the NRC. Uh, as far as Gary, all along during all this time has been an industry leader. In 2005, he was elected to the executive committee for the NEI, the Nuclear Energy Institute, and elected to the nuclear, um, the INPO, the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations Board of Directors. In 2009, he was on the chairman, he was named chairman of the board for the, the Nuclear Energy Institute until 2014, and then remained as a committee member of the executive committee. Yeah, more I agree, it's pretty good. <laughs> okay, throughout his year, throughout his career, uh, Gary's been a community leader. You can see the many boards that he's served on. Gary's also <laughs> served the community um, through various board affiliations and chaired numerous organizations. See all those? It's amazing. Uh, special honors, uh, Gary and Kathy were named the United Way Midlands Humanitarians of the Year Award in 2012. And in, uh, Gary was Citizen of the Year by the Mid-America Council of Boy Scouts of America this year in 2015. 
Gary's also a fearless leader. Just as fearless outside his work, he has a passion for flight, fast cars, and brilliant women. If you'll notice, Kathy's there. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. As you soar into new adventures, we'd like to thank you for your inspiration and dedication. You've led by example, reminding us of the importance of your family, and you'll also be missed by your OPPD family. And we have a picture there of Gary and his family. Uh, Gary's tenure as president uh, and CEO is 11 years, four months, is the second longest ever at OPPD. Gary, thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Thank you. <clears throat> resolution number 6056. Whereas W. Gary Gates, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Omaha Public Power District, will retire on June 1, 2015, following more than 40 years of service. And whereas on September 1st, 1972, Mr. Gates joined OPPD as an engineer in technical services and served over the years in numerous positions, including supervisor of operations at Fort Calhoun Station, division manager of nuclear operations, and vice president of nuclear operations prior to being appointed president and chief executive officer in 2004. And whereas during Mr. Gates' 11-year tenure as president and chief executive officer, he directed OPPD to create and quickly surpass a self-imposed <coughs> goal of having 10% of its energy production come from renewable sources by 2020. He then oversaw the development of OPPD's first-ever stakeholder process to ensure customers had a voice in the operation of their utility. As part of that process, OPPD developed a diverse energy generation portfolio portfolio that focused on en environmental responsibility. And whereas Mr. Gates increased the company's focus on cybersecurity and was at the helm when OPPD entered into the Southwest Power Pool Integrated Marketplace. And whereas he led the company and protected its assets during the worst flood in his, its history, he then directed a major overhaul of the utility's nuclear plant and secured a new nuclear management model to safeguard the successful operation of the plant for years to come. And whereas he ensured OPPD's customer service remained a priority, earning 13 consecutive awards for residential customer satisfaction from the prestigious J.D. Power and Associates. Whereas Mr. Gates has demonstrated commendable service within the community by chairing boards of various local organizations, his board service extended beyond our local community to national, international, and industry organizations, often being recognized for his dedication, commitment, and exemplary contributions. And whereas Mr. Gates has remained dedicated to the ideals of public power and OPPD's customer owners have benefited because of his commitment to providing affordable, reliable, and environmentally sensitive energy ser services. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District at a meeting duly convened on the 16th day of April 2015 desires to publicly acknowledge the distinguished service and leadership of W. Gary Gates and to express its gratitude for the commitment, integrity, and pursuit of excellence consistently demonstrated during his more than 40 years of service. Be it further resolved that a suitably inscribed and formally framed copy of this resolution be presented to W. Gary Gates upon his retirement to serve as a constant reminder of the sentiments expressed herein. So moved. Second. Okay. And I was going to reflect on Gary's accomplishments both within the organization and also in the community, but uh, your presentation said it all. All I can say is all I want to add is uh, I want to publicly thank Gary for being a good friend and a mentor on things in both within the organization and things without. I've counted on Gary a number of times for his advice, and I certainly appreciated it. Um, I hope you and Kathy have a great retirement. Thanks for your service. Thank you. Any other comments? On behalf of the former summer help, we want to thank you for your years of service. <laughs> <laughs> we used to laugh. But the, when Gary was... President and I was the chairman of the board at that time. It was the only time in the utilities history that the summer help had taken over. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, those of us that were here 11 years ago and voted for you are very proud today to reflect back upon the decision we made and the service you have given to us. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Madam Chair. 
Oh, you didn't know? No. Okay. Everybody, everybody got a chance. Everybody gets a chance. I didn't oh, see you. Okay. Anyway, I'd like to reflect back on when I first met Gary. Um, he was the plant manager at Fort Calhoun at the time, and I had just been appointed to the board, and they had to find a committee for me, so they invented the Nuclear Oversight Committee. <laughs> Guess what I knew about nuclear power? Nothing. So we met out at the power plant, and first of all, my first thought was finally somebody that's not 60 years old, because at that time we were both 35, uh, and somebody I could relate to. And of course, because of my new position in this new committee, I had spent a lot of time with uh, then uh, plant manager Gates, and uh, we instantly bonded. Uh, he comes from a small town in Iowa. I come from a small farm in uh, Louisville, Nebraska, and it just seemed like we clicked, and, and uh, um, I knew that I could always count on him for uh, common sense advice and, and uh, tell me what, what was going on, and I could grow as a board member, and, and, and I could see him growing as a, as a leader throughout, especially when he moved up to the executive's assistant role, and you knew great things were destined for him. And I had no doubt that he would eventually one day run this utility. Uh, I'm proud to have served with him. And our relationship, I hope, will not just end on this retirement, but will continue into the future. Thanks for all your service. Thanks, Fred. Very much. Well, just <clears throat> being new to the board, just two years, I did, you know, Gary, I don't, and a lot of these have a long history with you, but I just wanted to say it, it was amazing in two years the breadth of issues you have to cover. And I've always thought you've been you've been great, and I never really understood that, but I'm learning as I go. <laughs> but it, it's amazing the challenges you face as a CEO, and I just want to say you've always been very forthright and and reaching out to me and, and others, and I, I really appreciate that because it helped me learn a lot. So far, I got a lot more to learn, but I just appreciate your openness. It's it's been great working with you, and I wish you the best. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Gary, I was uh, in the forestry department as summer help um, in the 80s, and I, uh, I didn't think I'd ever get to be on the board of directors, uh, but when I, when I, and I, I started the same time as Tim, and uh, you've, you've been uh, just an incredible balance of a leader, a visionary, and uh, when you speak, you speak from knowledge. And it's just, uh, there's so many moving parts at OPPD, and you seem to have a command of all of them, from the human side to the mechanical side. And I'm just, I'm thoroughly impressed with you. So I just want to say thank you for your service. Thanks. Uh, I, I, I'm really new, not two years, just a few months, but uh, I had an opportunity uh, to meet Gary shortly uh, before the election, I, I reached out and asked if I could uh, visit with someone, and and uh, of course uh, uh, it was Gary that I had coffee with that morning, and uh, we visited about uh, uh, lots of things that I didn't understand, uh, but we did cross cross one thing that I did understand, and that was that we uh, uh, found out that uh, well, we both shared a love of flying, and uh, we. We also found out that I had sold my plane in, in 1904, 2004, I sold my plane. Frank. We were only up a few minutes. No. Uh, but uh, I, I sold it to, uh, my interest in it, to Rich McCollum, who was the head pilot over at Union Pacific. He was a good friend of mine. And uh, Gary asked me my tail number, and, and, I, and, he, and I told him, and he said, I, I bought your plane. <laughs> for column. And, and I was glad to see that it still looks that good. <laughs> it really, really looks nice. But uh, I've been very impressed with Gary and his staff and the employees and everybody since I've been here. And uh, like the rest of the board, I wish you well. And, and I'm still looking forward to a tour of that airplane. <laughs> we'll do it airborne. And Gary, um, I grew up in uh, North Bend, Nebraska, and I had a neighbor boy that was uh, that led me far and astray quite often. And uh, and in the meantime, uh, I moved to Blair, and uh, I was with the telephone company. And one of my responsibilities was special circuit, special uh, special applications at. The, the power station 
So I met Gary when he w looked much more like the, the <laughs> fun <laughs> than, than we do today. And uh, we, as he moved on, uh, I found out later that he was living next to, he, he and Kathy were neighbors to that young boy in North Bend that led me astray. And I think Gary may have been led once or twice. Oh. Kathy, you <laughs> might. But uh, so we've we've kept in touch through through the years that way. And and then of course, I, as you come into an organization this complex, and you meet people of this caliber, um, and and then you you understand what a CEO in fact really does at OPPD. It's amazing. It's amazing. You don't. Uh, I've not seen you lose your temper. I've seen passion. But uh, you are a model for certainly Tim and anyone to follow in your footsteps, my friend. Congratulations and good luck. Thanks, Mike. Well, congratulations, Gary. I, I might as well say how I first met Gary. I met Gary at a, uh, a, a Academy of Nebraska Gymnastics. Uh, Jenny and my daughter Megan uh, took gymnastics about six days a week. Is that it? So uh, many a day, uh, either Kathy, Gary, or I, uh, uh, met up as we were picking up the girls coming home from uh, gymnastics. It's quite a sport. Well, Gary, uh, we are going to miss you. We're very proud of you. Um, and I think we might as well have uh, a vote on this resolution. Barrett. Yes. Kavanaugh. Yes. Gay. Yes. Green. Yes. Hurley. Yes. McGuire. Yes. Mines. Yes. Ulrich. Yes. Motion passed. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Picture time. <laughs> Usually by the flags. I got to get the sign in there. You got to get the sign in there. You are going to totally be in the way. <laughs> Photo bombing by the <laughs> 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 Photoshop him right out. <laughs> the public's opportunity, if anyone would like to. Uh, <coughs> David Corbin, 1002 North 49th Street. Uh, first, I'd like to join in uh, wishing uh, Mr. Gates uh, the best of uh, the rest of your life, and thanks for all that you've done here at OPPD. I met Mr. Gates and uh, Mr. Burke uh, when I unsuccessfully ran for the board of OPPD, but I told them at the time, I said, whether I win or whether I lose, you're going to see me all the time. <laughs> I lived up to that promise. <laughs> uh, uh, I also want to wish the best to uh, Sherry Hutcherson and her new endeavors, and uh, thank her for her uh, the encounters that we've had and the meetings that we've had with her. Uh, and as uh, transitions to Tim Burke, I, I wish uh, all the best for the future of OPPD. I want to just let you know, I don't know how many of you have had a chance, but yesterday I also got the opportunity to see Del Weber, and uh, hes you probably saw the article about him in the paper. He's doing very well, and I, I was very uh, happy to see him. So as we move forward, then, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the new uh, demand-side management uh, plan and see how that uh, comes out, and I uh, still am... Uh, hoping that the, the green fund, that we can work out something where we have something along the lines of what we propose for Sienna Francis House or other similar entities. So uh, all the best to uh, the people leaving. Oh, one thing. Uh, notice that when you retire, it doesn't mean you can't come to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if Mr. Burke would like that. <laughs> So I wish you all the best. Thank you. And thank you.
for your uh, continued commitment, Dr. Corbin. Yeah. Brett Favre, do you want to retire? John Pollock, 1412 North 35th Street, Omaha. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Gates for his service and uh, also Ms. Hutchison. Um, and this, this is an interesting transition, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, working with uh, Mr. Burke also with, uh, for new green uses of uh, energy. Uh, and it's also a transition in our meteorology. Uh, we're into the uh, middle of spring. We also had a uh, transition out in the Pacific Ocean where all through the winter we had a very weak uh, El Nino that did not really uh, make its presence felt in California and the West Coast, unfortunately. Ironically, now that we're in the middle of spring, El Nino has strengthened considerably, but the connection between El Nino and the predictability of uh, weather declines for the central part of the continent in the spring and summer months. So the net result is, as usual, we still don't know what's going on. Uh, however, there are some uh, useful tendencies. In the short term, we have uh, uh, the western drought has been spreading. It's been intensifying in the northern plains, and that includes uh, enveloping the Dakotas, getting into Minnesota. Also, western and central Nebraska have been drying out. The southern plains are already in a drought. However, the southern plains is going to be affected by a series of storm systems. The first one will bring some useful moisture up into Nebraska, but the storm track is tending to run south of us, which is typical of an El Nino spring. We have a reduced overall frequency of severe weather events, so that's helpful. Uh, we're going to see some milder weather and rain the next few days, and then cooler weather. Uh, but a continued uh, sort of uh, wet pattern, at least through the weekend. Uh, we Our next major weather system will probably be kicking into the region late next week or over the following weekend. The Northern Plains is forecast in the medium range, that's the next one to three months, to continue to be dry. That means reduced flows on the Missouri River are likely to continue throughout the summer season. Uh, not worried about flooding on the Missouri so much, but we do have the potential for reduced flow uh, accompanying any uh, summer heat wave we might get. So we'll have to watch that one. On the other hand, the uh, Platte Basin is going to pick up some very useful moisture the next couple of weeks, and things are uh, looking up for western and central Nebraska. We uh, have some indication that we're going to continue getting the spring rains that we need in that area, and the southern plains may be getting some relief as well. So that's the way things are shaping up at the moment. Uh, we'll really have to watch that drought situation in the northern plains because that could uh, really help build a uh, one of those thermal uh, ridges in the summer that produces a prolonged heat wave. Way too early to be sure about that one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Laverne Drain, uh, 31st Street, Noma. Um, I brought a Green Biz Forum 2015 in February 17th and 19th on, in Phoenix. I would hope that um, you guys would send some of your managers to those forums that are happening around the country. Um, I know multiple vice presidents here are having to deal with the nuclear power plant now, so they're not as keen to be hitting these other renewable energy forums that are set up. This is all utility grid and uh, all set up for the utility people, microgridding and what have you. And, um, and what the good thing about here is there's a wonderful solar company on here, um, Wilson's, five to six cents a kilowatt hour. They can set up in-grid systems for you, uh, no problems. The reason I brought that in is the World Herald article, which you probably all read about the rate hikes 
and you know the graphs in here are lovely. It's what we've been saying all these years. If you had gone renewable, and you see the guys who didn't go renewable are straight down, and you're going straight up with high, you know, rate hikes. Um, part of the 40-year legacy that's been left out of this beautiful event is mercury in the fish in the river from your coal plants and the nuclear waste stacked up along the river that you claim the federal government won't take off your hands, which I told you probably a year ago that they probably won't because no Congress is beholden to any other Congress. So the Congress doesn't have to take that waste because a past Congress said they would. And you might end up being responsible for it in the future. And Gary's um, you know, conversation about energy generation and how it's increased three times the customers and how much more energy you're generating, I really hope the next CEO could brag that they had three times the customer base and that they're only using the amount of energy that they used in the 70s. Now that would be something to brag about because that would be pollution mitigation, that would be improvement of people's homes and businesses, windows, doors, and insulation. That's what that looks like, and I hope our next CEO can brag that he uses less than what they did. And um, I want to thank everybody for doing everything, and except for the fact that the pollution that you've left behind has not been cleaned up. And, um, and I hope that OPBD no longer fights the uh, rulings that are coming out of Washington, which I know you're participating in that lawsuit. I don't like the fact that my money's going to stop the EPA regulating your coal ash. You have a vice president here who said in an executive meeting that coal ash was non-toxic. It's not true. That's why the federal government is regulating it now. So I just want everybody to have a nice day. I just hope we can clean up this mess that's been left behind of this 40-year legacy of polluting energy systems. I gotta give this to you guys. And don't have to be so dour, everybody. It's okay, we can fix it. We really can. <laughs> Are there any other comments? Well, I think this is, I think uh, Mr. Sarandon is right. This is, we don't have to be so dour. And this is a happy day. And um, this is the end of the meeting. Appreciate and it. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Now I get to go hug a baby. <laughs>